brighter than the pole star, 225 million years to go around the center of the Milky Way galaxy, Sirius, with Alcyon in tow and us and our solar system following along. Oh, totally. Oh, I'm totally serious. <laughs> Let's pull that back to what that looks like from outside. Our sun, one million light years away, is oh, it's just cosmic dust. Does not become the brightest star till one light year. This is a 225 million year journey. Earth orbits Alcyon, 25, 627 years, with us in tow. And our, our sun orbits Alcyon, with us in tow. Alcyon orbits Sirius and the center of the Milky Way galaxy every 225 years million years and Sirius our Milky Way galaxy rotates around the center of the universe well that would be a cosmic year wouldn't it once around we'll get to how many times we've been around this what you're looking at is one of the most fantastic pieces I was able to find this would be the galactic central Sun is that Alcyon or Sirius okay there's Earth and you're going to find this has to be serious, and you're looking at a 225 million year cycle. This will be demonstrating our precession of the equinoxes and why the Earth wobbles the way it does, 23 and a half degrees towards the great central sun, the center of the Milky Way galaxy, or away from it, depending on which is above or below the galactic equator. So not only do we rotate in a circle, we have an orbit which goes up and down. Now we have a pull. Now we don't have a pull. Now you'll see when it's in the center, it's straight up and down. There's no magnetics on either side. Keep this in mind. This is extremely important. Okay, so right there, our elliptical orbit crosses the center of the Milky Way equator. And as you can see, it's actually going to be going down. This is our elliptical orbit. And 25,627 years ago, when we were that direction. Ancient scholars who observed precession of the equinox provided a simpler explanation than a wobbling Earth. They said that our sun curves through space, moving in a great orbit of its own pulling the Earth and other planets along with it. Search your feelings. You know it to be true. This is a correct picture of our orbits from a top-down view.
But since the sun is traveling, let's turn it on sideways. Let's give it a three-dimensional. If you were to watch the orbit of our sun on a vertical motion, it's called a helical orbit. Our sun is traveling through the galaxy at an incredible 132 miles per second or 482,000 miles an hour, which means we travel 11 million miles a day, whether you're awake or asleep. Here's Voyager 1 and 2, and looking out at our heliosphere as our sun barrels through the galaxy at a blistering 482 thousand miles per hour. It's 11 million miles a day we travel. I mean, we all know we spin and we go, but in one year, at that velocity, awake or asleep, we travel 4,222,000,000 miles a year. That's what I call a mothership. We're already on the mothership. We all live in a helical solar system. If this term sounds new, you're not alone. Most people don't know what it means. This video is an opportunity for you to learn that the helical solar system is where we all live. It will help you understand what a helical solar system is and show you how it moves. We live on planet Earth, one of the eight planets revolving around a star we call the Sun. The Sun is one of millions of stars in the Milky Way galaxy. During the 20th century, astronomers discovered that the Sun itself is revolving around the center of the Milky Way galaxy. The Sun's velocity as it orbits the galaxy is currently calculated at 134 miles per second, or 482,000 miles per hour, a very substantial velocity. For centuries, we have been taught that the planets of the solar system move in flat orbits in a plane called the ecliptic, with the sun at its center. All of that is still true, except for the term flat orbits. Because the sun moves, no planet can follow a flat orbit. To keep pace with the Sun, it has to move in a spiral, or a helix as the astronomers call it. Here we can begin to see the helical paths of each of the four inner planets as the Sun and planets move away from the camera. So by focusing on them, we can best demonstrate how helical orbits fit around the Sun. Moving outward from the Sun, we see Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. We can also see that the planets closer to the Sun have to move faster than those farther out.
I could watch that all day. So as we're hurtling through the galaxy, one might say, well, you know what? Don't we line up with our central sun, Alcyon, every precession of the equinoxes, every 25,627 years? Absolutely. In fact, twice. Once at 12 o'clock and once at 6 o'clock. But we're over on this side of the galaxy. Right here, this is 25,627 years ago, 23,000 B.C. Now, fast forward as we orbit in a counterclockwise position that way, uh, with Alcyon in tow, watch what happens when we fast forward one precession of the equinoxes, the alignment that we read about earlier, Earth with our moon, our sun, alignment with Alcyon and Sirius, all when? Anybody? Right on cue. I love that. Which means it's pretty big. The last time this happened was never. And for the life of me, uh, I am going to apologize in advance. There's only one thing I could think of to call a triple solar alignment. Now this is what the Mayans said, Earth, Moon, Sun, Pleiades, Alcyon, the greatest star in the Pleiades constellation. The most significant of the Mayan calendars was the Long Count. It tracks a 5,125-year era. Beginning on August 11, 3114 B.C. and abruptly ending on December 21, 2012. Did the Mayans actually intend this date to represent the end of time? Science has confirmed that the winter solstice in 2012 will coincide with an extraordinarily rare event called a galactic alignment. It will seem to place our sun in the very center of our home galaxy, the Milky Way. From our vantage point within it, the Milky Way looks like a band with a dark rift in the center, a place where there are no visible stars. Mayan astronomers calculated that the winter solstice sun appears to line up within this dark rift center of the galaxy once every 26,000 years. Astronomers today have concluded that the coming galactic alignment will be the first such occurrence since the beginning of human civilization. They suggest violent solar storms hurling deadly radiation toward Earth, a magnetic polar shift, even a complete pole reversal. Scenarios that could leave our planet devastated. According to some interpreters, the Mayan calendar is clear. 2012 marks the end of time. Many believe that this is the date when the world will end. Now by this point, probably not most, but more humans than not, have heard about 2012 some reference that the Mayan calendar, the last day, also marks, but within 31 days of now, virtually every human being alive on planet Earth will know that that means the world will end. The sky is falling. which of course is preposterous. It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life. Not one prophecy, scripture, piece of writing ever says the end of the world. Not one. It's nowhere. Chicken little. It certainly doesn't say it in any Mayan prophecy. It's not in the biblical prophecy. Not in any Indian prophecy. Not in the Quran never says the end of the world. I'm a standing offer for anyone to show me any prophecy, any writing that says it's going to be the end of the world. It doesn't exist. This world that we live on, this third rock from the sun, is exactly that, a big giant rock. It's not going anywhere. 
There's only one prophecy, to my knowledge, which even correctly uses the phrase. And yet, while no prophecy ever states the end of the world, they do all point to the end of something. You've probably heard the phrase a thousand times. End times. End time prophecy. The Mayan prophecy clearly states the last day of the calendar marks the end of time. It's not like it's the end of the world or anything. It's only the end of time. They called it a time of no time. Whoa. Trippy. Now, until time ends, time will appear.